Hi, my name is Shanda Hott. I'm the Assistant Director for Housing Information. I'll be talking to you today about assignment considerations and accommodations. I oversee the Housing Information Office, and we work with students regarding their contracts, assignments, and billing for housing in the meal plan. My role is working with assignments, and specifically those with medical or ADA needs. So we'll be reviewing that process today. So many people have questions regarding housing assignments and requesting specific accommodations or if they have assignment considerations to consider. Give you a little bit of information um, to start out with uh, regarding resources here at the university. So as many people are accustomed to uh, working with IEPs and 504s from secondary education, those do not necessarily transition to higher education. So requesting accommodations at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign should be one of those things on your to-do list if that is something that is applicable to you. Requesting accommodations can be in the form for uh, academics uh, specifically or for housing specifically and or both. Um, but all students are referred to the Division of Disability Resources and Educational Services. And I've put that web, website address on the screen for you. Um, the Division of Disability Resources and Educational Services is also known as DRES, D-R-E-S. They are your resource for requesting formal accommodations. You apply for services through that Division um, of Disability Resources and Educational Services. Um, through their website. They have a very detailed website regarding what the application process is. <clears throat> and uh, a couple of things to remember is that it's a very, very much a student-driven process. So this is the first opportunity that a student has to really advocate for their uh, on their own uh, for their needs in regards to academics or housing um, at the university level. So it's a good exercise for the student to go ahead and start applying for that if that's applicable to them. They will require documentation for review. And after they receive that completed application, um, the student is assigned an access specialist that they will be in communication with. That access specialist will review the documentation that they receive. Um, follow up with the student with any additional questions or documentation needs, and then decide whether to issue a letter of accommodation for academics, for university housing, or for both. DRES will not release those letters uh, directly to university housing, so we have a link on our website where you can submit that letter of accommodation. DRES will talk to uh, the student regarding academic and housing, dietary restrictions, allergies, depending upon the severity of those allergies. And then also they may issue an, a letter for emotional support animal if that's something the, the student is interested in. For university housing, uh, we have a specific accommodations webpage um, that has a good a bit of information on it. You can find it by going to apply on our website and then clicking on accommodations. Again, that that letter, the letter of, uh, of accommodation for housing would need to be submitted through um, the link that's provided on the accommodations website. We do not accept that through email anymore. It's just simpler uh, for the student and, and for us if they submit it through that link. It's very um, important that students understand that we are looking for a letter issued by the Division of Disability Resources and Educational Services. Due to HIPAA regulations, we are unable um, to accept medical documentation through this web link. It has to be a letter issued by that division, that office. If you have any questions, please give us a call. We are happy to help clarify. DRES serves as the resource that will collect that 
specific medical information, and then we'll determine if a letter of accommodation is, is warranted and should be issued. So once we receive that DRES letter of accommodation request, um, I will make every effort uh, to provide the requested accommodations noted in the letter. I will also look at resident hall preferences, even though I can't guarantee those uh, because of availability. It really depends on the space availability. I will do my very best to um, address not only accommodations, but resident hall preferences and or roommate preferences as well. So students that are working through the housing contract may come across the assignment consideration section of the contract. If there are medical or disability related housing needs, that is where a prospective student <clears throat> will note that in the contract, but they must follow up with us with a letter of accommodation so that we know that it is medically an AD, ADA, uh, it's a medical or an ADA accommodation need. The student also has the ability within the assignment considerations to note if they have dietary restrictions and want to learn more about how to maximize the meal plan um, given that they have dietary intolerances or allergies. So that's something to, to consider. There is also space to request assistance with room assignment as it relates to gender inclusive needs or just requesting more, more information regarding gender inclusivity and how to navigate that through room selection. So a timeline for uh, accommodation requests. We really um, accept those at any time. Um, the DRES letters of accommodation for housing specifically, if they are submitted to us through that link on our accommodations website prior to May 22nd, the, the May 22nd priority deadline, um, then I will work on those letters of accommodation to pre-assign before room selection. And I again, I look at accommodations requested, space availability, um, resident hall preferences, and then roommate preferences, if that's applicable. I will do my best to, with that pre-assignment. If we receive letters of accommodation after May 22nd, I will work on the assignment as well. I will look at space availability and hall preferences and roommate preferences as well. So it's the same process, but it just depends on if I work on a pre-assignment or an assignments process. And if you're worried that you're not going to meet that May 22nd deadline or at least have the contract done, but you don't quite have the letter of accommodation, please know that I set aside rooms um, that are not available during room selection so that I may work on accommodation requests throughout the summer. For those with nutrition or dietary considerations, we have excellent resources. Please keep in mind that all residents living in undergraduate residence halls are required to have a meal plan, one of the four meal plans. The 10 classic 45 dining dollar meal plan is our most popular. The 12 classic 15 dining dollar plan is our most affordable. And then we have two additional plans that meet the needs for very specific audiences. There's an all dining dollars plan where I believe there's $130 dining dollars on that for a week. Um, and then there is an all classic meal plan, which is like 42 meals during the week. And that, that meets the needs for certain people that need to have snacks throughout the day. I would encourage you that if you have life-threatening allergies, that you do apply for services through DREZ and you do request a letter of accommodation that you could submit through, us, through that link. It's helpful for me to know in case someone needs help um, finding uh, a compatible roommate that understands the restrictions of those um, allergies. Most people though can navigate the dietary and allergy needs through the different resources that we have available. So the Illinois app has the menus for all of our dining locations, and then also the nutritional information for those menu items. You can filter for dietary needs and or top allergens for each item on the menu. So students have that available to them day in and day out to really be planful and be mindful of how to navigate those menu items. We also have an Eat Smart website that's helpful. We have the Inclusive Solutions Kitchen micro restaurants, 
um, that are available for for foods that are are made without the allergens. Um, and so there's more information regarding the inclusive solutions plan if you have a letter of accommodation that necessitates that. We also have other dietary resources and in a managed diet and allergy programs through our, our university dining dietitian. And so students can um, email the dietitian and, and ask questions or set up a meeting, whatever would make um, the transition easier for the student regarding how to navigate those dietary and allergy needs. Um, we, have, we are very lucky to have the resources that we have for our students. Wanted to touch base on service animals and emotional support animals. On rare occasion, we do get requests for such. A DRES letter um, is required only for an emotional support animal. And again, it's on that accommodations website on the university housing website. Service animals um, are individually trained to do work or, perf or perform tasks that are allowed in public areas. We do have an, a service animal information card for people who bring a service animal with them to live in the residence hall with them. The emotional support animal is a little bit different because they're not necessarily always trained uh, to do work or perform tasks. Sometimes they are, uh, but a, a lot of other times that provides the handler support in, in different ways. Um, we do have an emotional support registration form that students are required to fill out. Um, within that, they submit um, the letter of accommodation from DRES. They um, read the, the responsibilities of the handler. They submit an updated record of vaccinations. Um, they list an emergency contact for care as well. Um, and then I review and approve that process or ask further questions if I need to. But that registration form for ESAs is on our website under accommodations. And then those gender inclusive assignment considerations. Um, gender inclusive is really those spaces are, are about people living in an in-room co-ed environment that acknowledges, respects, and appreciates students of all gender identities and expressions. Gender inclusive spaces allow for individuals with different biological sexes sex assigned at birth and or gender identity to reside in the same room. So we have um, gender inclusive housing options available to students. We have two different specific um, parts of floors that are available and then we have spaces scattered throughout our room inventory as well. There's more information our, on our housing website under special living options and gender inclusive housing options. If you have questions about navigating um, through the housing contract to find a roommate or room selection, we are happy to provide additional assistance through the Housing Information Office. You may contact the Housing Information Office and request uh, a phone appointment with me, and I'm happy to talk through questions and concerns regarding those needs. And to contact us for any other information, if there are specific questions that you have that pertain to a student's personal situation, please, please don't feel, um, feel free to give us a call um, and don't hesitate to do that. So our number is 217-333-7111, or we can be reached at this link, housing.illinois.edu backslash contact us. And we're happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you so much for your time today, and I hope you found this webinar helpful.